Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about three dimensional arrays in Java. In our previous class, we clearly discussed about two dimensional arrays and variable length two dimensional arrays. How memory is allocated? Please watch the classes and come back here. If you don't understand that, so our assumption, our explanation is completely based on the assumption. You already have that intuition. So coming to today's class, first we need to understand what is three dimensional array. Int three brackets a is equal to new int of three two five. What's the meaning of this uh, three two five? See, forget about the first one. The next two elements it is showing that uh, two comma five means uh, we need a two dimensional array of size two comma five means two lines five columns. The second two elements showing that it's a two dimensional array. Like this two dimensional arrays, we need three of them. That is what three dimensional array. So totally we need a three, two by five, two dimensional array should be needed. This is what it's showing that. So two by five, two dimensional array means this is two by five, two lines, five columns. So two lines index is zero, one, five columns index is zero, one, two, three, four like this we need three of them so first two dimensional array index is zero so that's why three means zero one two second two dimensional array index is one third two dimensional array index is two so total how many spaces it is going to assign two by five it is going to give ten like that you need three of them so total 30 spaces it is going to assign this is how it is is going to be assigned how memory is allocated in random access memory we are going to understand in a minute so this is the visualization you should get in your mind when you are discussing about three dimensional arrays so now if you want to access an element a of 0 1 2 the first zero shows that the first two dimensional array so zero means this is the first two dimensional array one means in this two dimensional array first line zero eighth line first line in this first two dimensional array second column means this one eight is going to be displayed this is how we are going to access the element suppose if you want to access the element this one so 29 second two dimensional array means zero at the two dimensional array first two dimensional array second two dimensional array second two dimensional array you need the first line zero at the column first second third column so a of two one three this is how we need to access the elements now coming to the memory allocation, how memory is allocated to three dimensional arrays. In our last class we discussed how memory is allocated to two dimensional arrays. The same way it is going to assign the space. See, total how many two dimensional arrays are needed? Three two dimensional arrays are needed. That's why the first A is going to assign, the first array is going to have three spaces. The first space is pointing to how many arrays is needed? 2 by 5 array is needed. So the second array is showing 2 spaces. This is pointing to 2 spaces. This is pointing to 2 space array. Each space is pointing to a 5 space array. Because 5 columns. This is 2 lines. This shows 2 lines. 2 lines. 2 lines. In this 2 lines. This is the first line, second line. This is the first line, second line. This is the first line, second line. So this is how memory is allocated to. And finally, our data is stored here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is first two-dimensional array in the, in, the, in the above perception. But memory is allocated like this. Because in Java, arrays are allocated as a array of arrays. Array of arrays of arrays. The second two dimensional array is 11, 12, 13 up to 20. The third two dimensional array up to 30. This is how elements are stored. If you want to access the element A of 0, 1, 2. How you, know you are going to access the element in random access memory? A of 0 means here. This is pointing to this array. 
in that one means this location this is pointing to this array in the two means zeroth line zeroth column first column second column eight is going to be displayed this is how the same thing whatever the visualization we provided here but according to the random access memory it is stored like this this is how it is going to be stored if you want to access the same way it is going to access but it is going to get the array array value here from here it is going to get this array value in this array you need to access the second position second position means zeroth position first position second position so this is how we need to access uh, in our last class we clearly discussed a variable length two dimensional arrays similarly we are having variable length three dimensional arrays also how we are going to define a so we are going to show it in a code in three dimensional array we mentioned only the first value three we need three of the two dimensional variable length two dimensional arrays how we are going to assign variable length two dimensional arrays we discussed in our pre last class the same coding we are going to use here a of 0 means here we mentioned 3 a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 for this a of 0 assign a two dimensional array of 5 by 2 means 5 lines 2 columns the second two dimensional array, array is 2 by 1 means 2 lines 1 column the third two dimensional array is 4 lines 3 columns this a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 is this is the one a of 0 a of 1 a of 2 a of 0 is pointing to a 5 by 2 dimensional array a of 1 is pointing to 2 by 1 2 dimensional array a of 2 is pointing to 4 by 3 2 dimensional array because this is a variable length three dimensional array if you want to access the elements all the elements that present in the two dimensional array we need a loop within the loop means nested loops similarly if you want to access all the elements that present in a three dimensional array that two variable length three dimensional array we need three loops loop within the loop within the loop but here we are going to use a variable length how you are going to get that variable length arrays uh, using the length attribute uh, which we discussed previously so here we mentioned the code so we are not going to explain this three uh, loop within the loop within the loop how it is going to be accessed uh, here it is going to get the value length uh, array length is getting a of i dot length here a of i j dot length uh, you, you try to uh, elaborate this code and apply this code to this memory locations and you try to do it that is the best practice to understand how we are going to access the three dimensional arrays so this point we are leaving it for you for, uh, for as an assignment you try to elaborate how because we are going to do multiple tests later on in the test it is going to be helpful and for better understanding of the coding also it is very very helpful Hope you understand the concept of three dimensional arrays. If you have any questions regarding the concept, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.